Happy Easter, children of God. I am Reverend Emily Hugie. I'm the pastor here at Geneva First United Methodist Church in Geneva, New York. Our music director is Charity Gelati, and contributing to this video are several AV technicians and musicians. I am so grateful for all their efforts, and I'm grateful to you. I'm glad that you've chosen to join us this day for a much-needed hour or so of celebrating joy. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia.
Would you pray with me? Almighty God, through your only Son, you overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Grant that we who celebrate our Lord's resurrection by the renewing of your spirit arise from the death of sin to the life of righteousness. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin against God and our neighbors. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Face the unknown, you can seek to walk with. 
Let us pray. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Hear these words from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is a message from God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Beloved children of God, sometimes joy surprises us. This was so in the story of the holiest week in all of human history. It started on what we now call Palm Sunday, when Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, and the people celebrated, they cheered, they cried, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. They were surprised by the joy that welled up within them when they saw this man, Jesus, who had been teaching and preaching and healing and miracle working. And that spirit continued throughout the week as Jesus gathered around the table with his disciples on Thursday evening. It was time for them to begin their celebration of the Passover feast. And so the disciples gathered together those who had become like family, if not by blood. But they were surprised by something else during that meal. See, it was at that moment that Jesus announced that one who was seated at the table would betray him. This was a surprise, but not of joy. Most of the things that would transpire over the next 24 hours were that way as well. See, Jesus would be arrested, betrayed, tried twice by two different authorities, found innocent, and yet killed as though he were guilty. Jesus ultimately would die the death of a criminal, the death called crucifixion. 
and then there would be silence. For a day or two or three, the disciples would have nothing but to grieve until that blessed Easter morning when joy would surprise them yet again. On that morning, the women who went to the tomb experienced some surprises of their own. First of all, when they got there, on their way they had been asking themselves, asking each other, who's going to roll away that giant, heavy stone for us? It's not something we can manage. And so they were surprised when they got there to find that it had already been rolled away. Who would have done such a thing? And then, as they entered the tomb, they were surprised yet again to see a man. A man in a white robe, just sitting there on the right-hand side of the tomb. Of course, the man's words would have been quite surprising, too. He noted their alarm, and he said, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Even those who had trusted in Jesus' prophecies, even those who had heard Jesus when he said that he would be raised from the dead, even those would still feel, I would imagine, a sense of surprise that this miraculous thing had actually happened. And not just surprise, but terror and amazement. This was for real. Jesus had really done what he said he was going to do. God had really accomplished the unthinkable through him. Have you ever been surprised by holy joy? If so, you might resonate with that mix of terror and amazement that the women felt in that day. Holy joy can surprise us in many forms. Perhaps holy joy has surprised you in the form of a call to serve God in a new and unexpected way or in a new and unfamiliar place. Perhaps holy joy surprised you in the form of a blessing or a gift or a responsibility that you weren't expecting or all one in the same. Oftentimes, blessings and responsibilities come coupled together. Maybe it's something much more simple than that. There's simplicity, there's beauty in the simplicity around us. Maybe you, like my daughter, were surprised by holy joy at the first little shoots of the crocuses poking up through the soil a few weeks ago. We in the Hugie House have been surprised by holy joy recently, and as such, we'll be welcoming baby number four into our world sometime around the end of October or beginning of November. However holy joy surprises you, I might encourage you to follow the template that the women laid out for us on that first Easter morning. Actually, we could go back even further than that about 30 years prior when Mary, the mother of Jesus, was surprised by the holy joy of the call, the gift, the responsibility of bearing the Christ child. The scriptures tell us at one point she pondered these things in her heart. Likewise, the women who saw the empty tomb and first heard tell of Jesus' resurrection were silent. They told no one to begin with because their terror and amazement had so overcome them. And so perhaps when we are surprised by holy joy, our first response might be to stay silent to ponder these things in our hearts, to give thanks to God in secret for the marvelous, miraculous, wondrous things that God is doing. But then, the Gospel of Mark doesn't tell us what happened next, but the Gospel of John does, and as it turns out, the women did go and tell the disciples, who then told their friends, and the world came to know of the saving power of God's love, the saving power of Christ. They told everyone. Perhaps we, too, when we are surprised by holy joy, could take a few moments in silent reflection and prayer and then go and tell everyone. 
Perhaps we could tell the world that we, like the characters of old, have been surprised by holy joy that God is still alive and active and working and wondering and blessing us all. And perhaps in telling others, it might give them hope that they too might be surprised by holy joy. This is our call, beloved children of God, that whenever holy holy joy surprises us in any way, shape, and form, that we give thanks to God in secret first, and then that we go and tell the world that they might know that joy abounds. I'm just wrapping up my ninth year in ministry, beloved, and the longer I do this, the more I become certain of these three things. And these are the truths I'll carry with me today. One, God is so good. Two, God is always with us. And three, God is full of surprises. And so my prayer for you this day is that you might be surprised by holy joy by the holy joy of God's saving grace and love, by the holy joy of that love which will not let you go, by the holy joy of all this season brings. May you be surprised by holy joy this Easter as you grab hold of the best promise of all, that of everlasting life. May you give thanks to God for it, and then may you go and tell the world. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us take a moment now to respond to that holy joy that surprises us anew by giving back to God a bit of that which has been given to us. You can make your contribution on the church's website or by mailing a check to 340 Main Street, Geneva.
Let us pray. God of power and majesty, with the rising of the sun, you have raised Jesus Christ and delivered him and us from death's destruction. We praise you on this bright day for all your gifts of new life. Especially we thank you for all victories over sin and evil in our lives. For loyalty and love of friends and family. For the newborn, the newly baptized, and those now in your eternal home. For the renewal of nature. For the continuing witness of the Church of Christ. God of eternity, you are present with us because of Christ's rising from the dead, and you persist in lifting us to new life in him. We bring to you our prayers for this world in need of resurrection. Especially we pray for nations and peoples in strife. For the poor and impoverished at home and abroad. For those we know in particular circumstances of distress. For the diseased and the dying. For all who follow the risen Christ. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, in whose name we pray as he taught us to pray when we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Beloved children of God, when holy joy surprises you this day, may you give thanks to God in secret, and then may you go and tell the world. Happy Easter. Mm -hmm.